Hello, hi. My name is Dr. Kant Shah. I'm a pediatric robotic and laparoscopic surgeon from Mumbai. Today we are going to talk about a condition called Hirschsprung's disease, which causes constipation in children. If treated correctly and on time, so this is a very curable disease. However, it is rare, and that is why we, were, we are going to talk about it. In this condition, the intestines uh, do not have ganglion cells, which are also messenger cells. They send the message from the brain that the intestine is now full of poop or stool and then it needs to be emptied out. And hence the last part of the intestine is unable to get the message and it just collects the stool and that causes the constipation. Because of this, the child usually at birth, but sometimes even an older child may be constipated. The commonest time that this is detected is in a newborn baby. When the newborn baby has not passed stools in the first 24 to 48 hours, that is the first alarming sign. Sometimes this information is not known to parents and they somehow manage to uh, bring up the child with a little bit of constipation. However, all parents must be aware that constipation in a child who is less than six months old is not very common and it needs to be looked at. If the constipation persists and the child is needing a lot of support, sometimes oral medications are given, sometimes suppositories are given. And if a lot of support is being needed, then again, these children need to be worked up to see if they have Hirschsprung's disease. So um, the way to go about this is to find out if the child has a Hirschsprung disease or not is first of all to consult a surgeon because along with constipation usually there is obstipation which means that there is a gaseous distension of the tummy. So the abdomen will also be swollen in most children and that is a, a big another alert sign that uh, this child may have Hirschsprung's disease. So, uh, so far we have talked about not being able to pass stools in the first 24 to 48 hours of life, uh, having uh, needing support to pass stools and having gaseous distension of the abdomen. These are the three red flags uh, that parents should be looking out for. If these three red flags are present, then usually the child will be sent to a pediatric surgeon such as us. And we would first do an examination of the baby. We would then do a barium study to look and see where this problem is in the intestine. And finally, the main point of the diagnosis is to do a rectal biopsy where uh, under a short anesthetic, we take a small, very small, tiny microscopic piece of the intestine and study it for these ganglion cells that we talked about. If these ganglion cells are absent, then that confirms the diagnosis and this is the test world over that is accepted as a diagnosis of Hirschsprung's disease. Once Hirschsprung's disease has been confirmed, the entire piece of intestine, which is aganglionic, needs to be found out. So more biopsies are needed. And then that intestine needs to be replaced with a fresh or a good intestine, which has proven ganglion cells. Usually this treatment is done in three stages where in the first stage, there will be a stoma made on the abdomen of the child where the stools come out. And in that stage, biopsies are taken. In the second stage that is replaced. And in the third stage, the stoma is shut down or closed. However, uh, in the last decade or two, we have worked on techniques, especially robotic and laparoscopic surgery, where we have combined these into a single operation with the use of technology uh, such as frozen section, where all the biopsies are done live and uh, we get the results immediately during the surgery within half an hour to an hour. And these results are then used to demarcate which intestine needs to be brought down. And all of this is done by laparoscopy or robotic, which means that it is done through very tiny holes in the abdomen. The recovery in such cases is then excellent. The children usually need to stay in hospital for about a week or 10 days. And in the long term, they get free of this constipation uh, and they can grow and thrive. The disease itself is a deadly disease and uh, it, the child can usually uh, uh, not thrive and grow with this disease. So. We have not seen a single child who has grown well with this disease. So yes, uh, without an operation, the so children with Hashimoto's disease cannot grow normally uh, and some would even not survive. Yes, there may be some complications during surgery. It is a very big surgery. It is a major surgery which lasts about six to eight hours. And uh, there may be complications related to anesthesia or complications related to the surgery. We use pediatric anesthetists as our main uh, support system along with intensivists who reduce these chances of anesthesia related problems to a minuscule in less than 1% of patients. From the surgery point of view, uh, it is a big surgery where 
a part of intestine is removed and joint and hence these joints may either leak or become too narrow in our experience this incidence is less than 5% but historically children about 15 to 20% have had problems after surgery most of them are simple and correctable with little more uh, procedure or surgery so we had a newborn baby recently who was uh, referred to us on the third day of life for not having passed stools where we did a contrast study like i said a barium study and a rectal biopsy in the first week of life proved that it was hashimoto's disease we kept this child on rectal washouts which means that the mother washes the stools every day and at 3 months of age a single stage surgery because it is a big surgery we would not like to do it in absolute newborn period a uh, single stage surgery was done successfully at 3 months of age and this child is now about a year old and thriving very well so there are no known factors as to why this disease occurs we know how it occurs in that there is a migration of these ganglion cells from the brain and the spinal cord which is abruptly stopped there may be some genetic factors it does run in families it is also known in children with down syndrome or trisomy 21 but apart from that no obvious cause is uh, known and if somebody who is suffering to uh, this disease wants to get a consultation or the surgery done to you where can they reach you so uh, we work, work across the city of mumbai and we've got uh, uh, we are located in borivli and nanavati hospital in gulepale and just look hospital in uh, south mumbai so uh, an appointment can be taken with us uh, easily and uh, we can also do an online video consultation for patients who come from far we do that regularly for our uh, patients from north and south india and international patients so all the files and papers can be sorted out looked at by a junior doctor team and then we can do a joint consultation with them so if you are a parent who has a child who has been diagnosed or is suspected to be hashimoto disease the first and most important thing is to not ignore this and not panic it is a very curable and a treatable disease and as we said earlier the results are fairly good uh, if timely and good treatment are done today we have technologies where we can even prevent the major complications of uh, a very big surgery like big scars and big cuts on the uh, on the muscles etc so all of this is doable uh, and uh, you must seek out help and uh, uh, just follow the advice given and uh, uh, and oh, sorry you must seek out help and follow the advice given by your doctor because uh, a delay in treatment may actually have a worse outcome thank you thank you so much for watching this video uh, this is a public awareness campaign that we are doing to make parents aware particularly about rare diseases with very complex uh, problems and complex surgeries so if you keep uh, if you subscribe to our channel then uh, we can keep you updated with all such uh, information from time to time thank you